Welcome to the Midday for a Tuesday. I'm Norman Gilliland. I wanted to get the whole ensemble in our studio today, but I guess that would have been an uphill struggle given that the ensemble performing in Madison tonight at the Overture Center, 7.30, is the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. So we have <laughs> the, uh, instead of the entire legendary ensemble, we have two worthy representatives. We have Ron Jarrett, who's the president of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and we have bass, Jonathan Gotchberg, who is a Madison, Wisconsin product and is part of the choir. Welcome to the Midday. Welcome to Wisconsin. Welcome back to Wisconsin, in your case, Jonathan. Thanks. It's great to be home. Thank you very much. Part of your uh, Midwest concert swing for the, for the choir? Yeah, we've been on the road since, uh, well, it's been about six or seven days. We started out in Columbus, Ohio, and sang there, and we've been... We had Indianapolis and Chicago and Milwaukee last night, and now we're here. The sheer logistics of that are mind-boggling. How many how many choir members are, and and logistical support team are we talking about? We're looking at just under six hundred people. <laughs> really? A, a small army. <laughs> so this is uh, like. 10 bus loads or something like that? 11. 11, 11 uh -huh. bus loads, three uh, semi-tractor trailers. <laughs> uh, we have to charter three airlines to bring us to our star starting point and then three to take us home. And then uh, vacation for everybody for a while? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Go right back to work. Is we that right? A, we have a broadcast to do on Sunday morning when we get back on Friday. So is being a member of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, is that a, a full-time job, Jonathan? No, I'm actually an assistant principal at high school uh, just north of Salt Lake City. This is, this is for me, it's uh, uh, in the LDS Church, we get religious callings, and my singing in the Tabernacle Choir is my calling. Uh, it's, it's an unusual circumstance because it's one of the only times that you actually get to audition to do something. Uh, but... Uh, it's a great opportunity for me, and we serve, we rehearse every Thursday night and Sunday morning, and about half the year, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday mornings. And how did you get there? What was your path from Memorial High School in Madison to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? Uh, well, my high school had a, had a huge impact on me. I had a great choir director there uh, named Ron Rocco, who is spectacular and then I went to the University of Wisconsin in Eau Claire for a year where I sang with Morris D. Hayes and the Singing Statesman. Oh, the Singing Statesman. Yes, yes. up there and then uh, transferred to the University of Utah where I, I have a bachelor's degree in music from the U of U and finished a master's degree in fine arts there and so I've been singing and and uh, playing instruments all my life and uh, after the U spent some time in Los Angeles and came back to Utah in 1990, joined the choir for the first time in 1994, sang for about four years, and I took a 14-year layoff <laughs> to raise my family and, and had a great opportunity to audition again and return for five more years. Uh, let me ask this question, maybe a little delicate, but once you audition, are you in, or do you have to audition every year? You audition once. And then if your attendance and your performance meets our standard, <laughs> then you stay for 20 years or until age 60, whichever comes first. That's it. So, I mean, 20 years, that's your, or age that's 60. That's the length that's, of that's your that's tenure. That? No mm -hmm. kidding. That's an interesting, is, is that unusual for, for choirs to operate that way or musical ensembles? All I can speak of is the Tabernacle Choir, and that's been the tradition we've established for many years. Uh, it, to allows other people an opportunity to join the choir and have the choir experience to learn from that. It also um, has proven to be age 60 an appropriate time because people's voices do change. The quality of their voice changes and strength and we want to projection. keep it as, uh, as productive as possible. Now, Ron, were you ever a member of the choir? Yes, I sang for eight and a half years. And then decided to go into administration? No, I uh, after my eight and a half year tenure, I was 60 years of age and I thought I was finished and I was asked at that time by the president of the choir at that time, Matt Christensen, to be his assistant. And I served there for three years and then I was asked to be the president of the choir. So you have, you've earned 
your silver hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in many ways. I too was an elementary principal, and I, I learned it through that, I'm sure. <laughs> that, 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 that alone would be enough. Uh, well, let's hear some of the, is this your latest CD, Gloria? It's actually not our latest CD, but it is um, the most recent one with the full spectrum of the choir's capabilities on it. Our most recent CD is called Teach Me to Walk in the Light, which is a collection of children's songs. Uh, how, uh, speaking of children, how young can one be and be in the choir? Is there a minimum age? Yes, you must be 25 years of 25. age. 25? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Now, why that? It gives uh, you an opportunity to complete your career, training, get out of college, those kinds of things. And then it gives you a chance to be ready to go to work and settle into a position where you can become a, a, a full-time member of the choir for a minimum of five years before things might begin to change in your life. So, stability. Truly. Well, let's hear first from this Glory CD. We'll be sampling fairly widely here, starting with a piece by Rossini. What about, uh, what about this appeals to you, Jonathan? It's difficulty. No kidding. Yeah, Cum Sancto Spiritu is, out of all of the pieces that we're doing, for me, it has been proven to be the most difficult and challenging piece. And as a bass, why would that be? Um, uh, you know, I don't really have a problem with the notes. Uh, in this case, it's a problem uh, finding the appropriate places to put the mens and amens because there are so many of them in this piece that you have to actually really, really study it and know it well in order to sing it correctly. And that, that's been my challenge with this piece. And they memorize everything. This is a memorized oh, piece. Oh, yeah, I think you would have to, wouldn't you? Well, yeah. here it is. This, this is a piece by Rossini as performed by the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Representatives of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir are with me here during the midday today. Ron Jarrett, who's the president of the organization, and Jonathan Gotchberg, who is a bass and of Madison background. And they're filling us in about this performance tonight at the Overture Center in Madison, 7.30, part of their Mideast tour, taking some 600 individuals <laughs> on the road. How many of those are actually in the choir? How big is the choir? We have 315 singers with us. Uh, normally the choir ha has about 400 members in it, but we take 320 <laughs> on the road. That's what the bleachers are <laughs> all. Crew. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's what the, that really that's the defining uh, number is, is the, yes most of the stages we perform on we can only put up risers and chairs for about 320. And says so that's true of overture also. Yes. Really. Mm -hmm. And so, how far back does this choir go, and how did it get so big? <laughs> when the tabernacle was constructed in Salt Lake City, they put in uh, seats for 360 voices, and over the years, the choir grew to fill in all of those seats, and so that's why we have a, a choir of about that number. Uh, the choir began in 1847 with the settlement of the Salt Lake Valley, and the beginnings were um, Welsh people converted to the Mormon Church. Famous came uh, came west, and they began the choir, the nucleus of the choir, th with that group. Those Welsh are famous for their choirs, aren't they? They are. And the same culture that brought us Tom Jones. Correct. <laughs> 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 very... And Bryn Turville. <laughs> well, yes, Bryn Turville. And uh, now you see this, the, the very newest CD that you're doing is with Bryn Turville. That is correct. And, uh, it's going to be kind of an interesting repertory on that one. We're going to do a little crossover with that, a little bit of uh, the classical, but more of the uh, appealing music from America that is also very appealing to the European people. Now, there has to be some kind of a 
a limit to the repertory you can do with a group that big, though. I mean, it's not like you would want to use the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to sing light classics exactly. Or maybe you can, I don't know. If they develop their sound properly, I think Mac Wilger Wilberg, the director of the choir, can get them to do just about anything. <laughs> and you always uh, perform with uh, and sometimes bring along your own organs? Yes, we have two organs with us that we'll use, but not here. We'll be able to use the beautiful organ in the uh, Overture Center here. We d do travel with two organs. Um, we travel also with a 65 piece orchestra, the orchestra at Temple Square, which is normally about 150 people, and depending upon what is needed for a particular uh, broadcast or concert, the, the numbers would change. But here on tour, it's a 65 piece member orchestra. And I think there's only one instrument in the world that could sort of carry an ensemble that size, and that would have to be the king of instruments. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> well, let's hear some more. We have on the same Glory CD, I guess you'd call it the title piece, which is by Rimsky-Korsakov. And uh, what can you tell us about this piece? Oh, the the Rimsky-Korsakov is a powerful it, piece. It, it actually opens the, the, we'll be opening the second half of our concert tonight. I don't know if I could give that away. I just did. Sure you can. <laughs> I, just did, I just gave that away. <laughs> but it is, it is a brief but powerful piece. And I love personally singing the Russian literature. Um, I... For, for a bass to be able to sing the low notes is always a good thing. And, There's so much yeah. good Russian low note music. Too. Yeah, there is. And, and we get a few opportunities to sing that music. And it, the experience of actually performing that particular piece for me is, is a joyful one. I mean, I, you can see the audience light up when we sing. <laughs> and to be able to transfer that joy from the stage to the people in the audience is a thrill for me and that's one of the pieces that does that. Why am I imagining the Rachmaninoff Vespers all of a sudden with all those great mm -hmm. low notes and, and the, just the, Russians, the, the Russian language, the sound of the language. Well you'll get some of that in this from Rimsky-Korsakov and Glory. Kind of a strong suit of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, isn't it? The big finale. There's a big sound with the choir, but I have to tell you, Norman, that we can get very small too. <laughs> we can get very small with our sound. So. And um, we didn't mention this, but your concert in Madison tonight is the first time the Mormon Tabernacle Choir has performed in Madison all these years. You start 1847, you're just now getting around to coming to Madison. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is correct. <laughs> so, uh, how often do you do these tours? It can't be terribly often. No, we only tour every other year. So we're touring uh, right now in the odd-numbered years, and it, it, it provides uh, our volunteer choir members an opportunity to vacation with their families and then the next year give their vacation up to come on tour with us. And you perform every Sunday at the Tabernacle there in Salt Lake City. We do. It is the longest running network radio broadcast. Uh, in July we'll begin our 85th year and so yes every Sunday morning well, half an hour show. That even beats chapter a day here on Wisconsin Public Radio. I think we can only lay claim to about 75 or 80 years of that, but it's a, an impressive undertaking. And this um, variety of repertory you have for the tour, you're calling it what, Bach to Broadway? That's what we have nicknamed it, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. And so you can imagine something for everybody. I'm still trying to envision, though, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, 400 or so strong, doing a Broadway tune. Um, how about 76 trombones? <laughs> That's a showstopper. That's a great number. I can well imagine now that you mention it. Climb Every Mountain is a great number. Well, we're going to have our quiz question here in a minute. We're going to have one more from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir after that, before we let Ron and Jonathan go here. 
and all of that after this here on WPR. Well, first we review yesterday's 12.30 quiz question, which I will recompose from the ether of bygone radio, since I don't have it right in front of me, and that was a famous 1920s short story inspired in part the development of what outdoor game in the 1980s? Well, the short story was called The Most Dangerous Game, probably all of us read it in high school, and it inspired, it is said, in part, the invention of the game paintball. That was yesterday's question. That, that was a tough one, apparently. Here's today's question. The world record holder is in the Alps with more than 11,000. That's uh, all I have, and we may have to like hint and clue our way to getting an answer to it, but we'll see. That's what we have for now. The world record holder is in the Alps with more than 11,000. So what is it? You have 27 minutes in which to answer the question. You can email your answer to me at midday at wpr.org. Or you can phone 1-800-442-7106 and give your answer to Tina, and you don't have to be first in to win the prize. And uh, one more now from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, and my guests today, the president of the choir, Ron Jarrett, and one of the bases, how many bases are there in the choir, Jonathan? I think there's 80 of us. What? what? How many? Between the bases and the baritones, there's 80. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you recommend so. that people sit in the front row for your concerts, or it would be better to be about half a mile back? I think back a little farther <laughs> would be. A little closer be. than half a mile. <laughs> yeah. Half a mile is too far, but yeah, halfway back is a great seat. And uh, there will be plenty of those tonight. Anyway, about this uh, last piece that we're going to hear, the Pilgrim Song. Uh, Pilgrim's Song comes from a, an East Coast tradition. Um, our associate conductor, Ryan Murphy, is from the East Coast, and he has arranged this piece. It, it's a beautiful melody. You'll recognize it when you when you play it. It's a it's a gorgeous a gorgeous hymn, and uh, um, I have to say that that this is also one of my favorites. Um, I like the peaceful nature of the piece, and. Uh, I don't know, Ron, do you have anything to, to add to that? It will show you the other side of the choir. Oh, I can't wait. Well, Jonathan Gotchberg and Ron Jarrett, thanks for coming in today, telling us about the Mormon Tabernacle Choir performing in Madison tonight. Thanks for having us.